wake up before 4 a.m. allows me to avoid that groggy feeling. I wake up to a pre-made protein shake, I take a cold shower to supercharge my system. I meditate, then I stretch, then I sit down to start work before 5.30. I'm off to another day where my timing is blocked to maximize output. Actually, that's not my story at all. Other than the meditation part, most of that is simply not true. I actually do my best to get eight hours of sleep. I enjoy having a slow morning with a coffee to ease my way into the day. And despite all of these obvious moments where I could push to be more productive, I like my life. I feel fulfilled in what I do. And in fairness, I don't feel unproductive at all. People often think that what I've accomplished has happened because I work on work. That it's like my street cred to have a great work life. But actually, it's because that hasn't been my true pursuit. The real goal has always been to try to get as good at life as I can. Work is just a part of that equation. So I actually try to stay away from some of the easy success strategy stuff that gets offered through lots of modern books and videos. I focus on slower moving content, pockets of wisdom that seem to be nudged forward over time because for me, it's not about burning the candle at both ends, grinding at all costs, success that tears life apart. To me, that seems like madness. I'm fascinated by a bigger picture. You may be doing more, but are you doing the right thing? You may be earning more. Is it still serving you and others? And even if others applaud your life from the outside, how do you actually feel about it on the inside? What do people think when you leave the room? What do you think? Are you being the person you know you should be? Are you being the person the world knows you could be? These are fundamental questions. I study work, not because of a fascination with work and productivity and achieving more. I teach leadership, not because of the title it offers. I create strategies with businesses, not because it sounds sophisticated or to simply make them more money. I do all those things because I believe work is what we do in attempt to build a better tomorrow. And that leadership is the way we change the path forward when things just aren't working. I gambled on having the strength to live two lives, one for myself and one for the world. This is what I mean. Back in the 1930s, 40s, and 50s, Abraham Maslow, one of the most famous psychologists of the 20th century, was taking on a new kind of study. Instead of studying people as they struggle, he wanted to learn what makes certain people great. He called them exemplary. And 18 of the world's greatest made the cut. To give you some context, Einstein was one of them. He wasn't studying the world's richest people or rock stars or entrepreneurs. He was searching for something else. He was trying to understand those who had extraordinary abilities and who put them to extraordinary use for themselves and for the world. Those who were impressive from all angles, he felt like he was on top of something new, a different type of person. They didn't fit, is what he said. Then he put it this way. It was as if they come from another planet. Now you've likely heard about Maslow. He developed a famous framework, Maslow's Hierarchy of Needs, which maps human experience and needs up to a pinnacle, a, a peak. A peak he referred to as self-actualization. He created this hierarchy after studying this group of 18. Because his goal all along, his mission was to explain how people could reach their ultimate potential. Included in this group of 18 were people like Einstein, but also Jane Addams, Abraham Lincoln, Eleanor Roosevelt, Frederick Douglass, and an anthropologist by the name of Ruth Benedict. And they're fascinating people. I couldn't help but to get caught up in some of their stories. I've been digging through their records, their archives, and it was in doing so that I came across a quote that has transformed my life and lies at the heart of my life pursuit. Helps me avoid getting swept up in the rat race. This statement has become my true north. It's by Ruth Benedict, who is said to be the first woman recognized to be a prominent leader of a learned profession. And she was an anthropologist. In fact, Maslow was one of her students. And this quote by Ruth Benedict was found after she passed away. It was scribbled in the top corner of a personal journal. Like Ruth just had to write it down, couldn't let the thought pass without putting it in writing. Marking it in time, Ruth Benedict wrote this. I gambled on having the strength to live two lives, 
one for myself and one for the world. She gambled. She took the risk on having the ability to do something that eludes most people, building a life that is purposefully self-satisfying and intentionally selfless at the same time. To coming together the best you've got to build your own life and the best you can give to others. She was talking about finding a single path that aligns your goals and a purpose much bigger than you. And to me, that's the version of success I've been chasing. I've helped launch and build a great business and a not-for-profit. I wrote a book I'm proud of. I travel the world for work and play. I love my wife, teach executive leadership and strategy, and have stayed mentally and physically fit for the better part of two decades. It's not everyone's ideal for success, but pretty close to mine. I gambled on having the strength to live two lives, one for myself and one for the world. 